breaking news. Tonight, Iran keeping their promise to retaliate, launching 15 ballistic missiles at two military bases in Iraq that house American troops. Iranian state TV releasing video which purportedly shows the missiles targeting one of the bases on al-Assad Air Base. This coming after a U.S. drone strike killed one of their top military commanders, General Qasem Soleimani, a revered figure in the country and across the Middle East. Iranians out in full force in the streets to honor him. President Trump briefed on tonight's attack, which came hours after he doubled down on his order to take out Soleimani, insisting that the general was planning a, quote, very big attack. Well, number one, I knew the past. His past was horrible. He was a terrorist. We had tremendous information. We've been following him for a long time. And we followed his path for those three days. And they were not good stops. We didn't like where he was stopping. They were not good stops. We saved a lot of lives. This, as Iranians tonight, pay their final respects to Soleimani. The White House closely monitoring the situation. President Trump tweeting tonight that, quote, all is well. This after the Iranian foreign minister tweeted they took proportionate measures in self-defense, saying they do not seek escalation or war, but will defend themselves against any aggression. The U.S. a few days ago also deploying 3,600 more troops to the Middle East in response to simmering tension. We go now to ABC's in panel reporting from Erbil, Iraq. Ian, what are you learning tonight on the ground? It's been a long evening of fast moving events and high tension here in Iraq. Two strikes by multiple missiles launched from the surface in Iran, landing in the surface in Iraq. The first and main target was the Al Assad Air Base. This is in western Iraq, out towards the Syrian border. It's home normally to thousands of US troops, though it's not clear how many were based there at the time, together with a large number of Iraqi troops as well. The other target was here in Erbil in northern Iraq. We heard the sound of two explosions at about 5.45 Eastern time, followed by another explosion about 30 to 40 minutes later. What we understand from the authorities here is that two of those missiles were targeted at the Erbil International Airport, which is less than two miles away from here. They were intercepted by air defence systems, a third missile landing out in open ground. If that is the case, and that, of course, will be analysed by US military experts to determine exactly what it was and, more importantly, where it came from. But it seems that the US military were tracking the flight of these. Now, the other key site, which was the Al-Assad Air Base, apparently was hit by multiple rockets, although it appears that a number of them failed to hit their targets. That's according to senior US officials. Everyone now remains on high alert, waiting to see what happens next. What will be the retaliation from the United States, if any? Iraqi forces, American forces, of which there are thousands here in the country, will now be in a high alert status, waiting to see what else happens in a defensive posture, at least until the word comes to act differently. Our thanks to Ian. We now turn to ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raditz, who's in Tehran. Martha, what are you learning from the Iranian side on this attack? Byron, I had spoken to the Iranian foreign minister just hours before these retaliatory attacks, and Javid Zarif told me that they wanted to hit the United States in a place that would cause the most pain. He also said they were very patient people and they would do it at a time and place uh, where they thought it would be most effective. But this came very suddenly here in Tehran. Uh, we talked to some people in the lobby of our hotel, some Iranians who were so concerned about this. And when they started hearing the news, they were very worried that there would be a retaliatory attack from the United States and that we would be in an all out war. Uh, Zarif told me today that that is up to the United States and how they respond to this attack. But I get the sense here tonight, Byron, that no one in Iran wants any sort of all out conflict. And where just a few days ago the ball was in Iran's court, it is now certainly in the United States uh, opinion on what they do and what action President Trump takes in retaliation to this attack. Byron. Thanks, Martha. We now turn to ABC senior national correspondent Terry Moran. So, Terry, what are you hearing from the White House tonight? Well, the president uh, was apprised right away, of course, of this attack, and he gathered around him uh, his top 
National Security Team, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Defense Secretary Mark Esper, top military commanders, Vice President Pence, all coming to the White House in the Situation Room as these developments occurred. Uh, and they watched as the damage assessment took place. He was also calling uh, other world leaders, including the Emir of Qatar, Qatar sometimes a go-between, between Iran and the West. So he was involved diplomatically and militarily, but at the end of the night, held fire, both literally and rhetorically. Really, this is a president who's been issuing blood-curdling threats against Iran, threatening a massive escalation if they retaliate for the killing of Qasem Soleimani. And nothing, really, at the end of the day, except the president did say that he would be speaking to the nation tomorrow morning. Terry, about that, the, tr the president tweeted tonight saying in part, quote, all is well. What does this tweet signal, you think? Well, I, I do think it signals that uh, he's looking for an off-ramp, wanting to maintain American credibility. He's certainly, one of his main political goals is to distinguish himself from President Barack Obama and previous American presidents who he says weren't tough enough on Iran. He has taken this dramatic action of taking off the battlefield, Qasem Soleimani, one of the national heroes of Iran. And here is this response from Iran, which apparently has taken no American lives, no Iraqi lives, uh, as far as we know at this point. It sounds as if both sides are trying to soften the tone a little bit. I mean, that's hard to say after a missile attack, uh, but it did not kill. And, and I think the president's response is measured in response to that. Uh, that is essentially what, what one can hope, given the prospect uh, that the region could explode in these days. But right now, it looks like uh, President Trump, who has certainly talked tough, is measuring his response. We'll find out more tomorrow morning when he does address the nation. Thank you, Terry. We now turn to ABC News military consultant Steve Ganyer. So, Steve, so far, there are no reports of casualties, and a quarter of the fire ballistics missiles failed. So what kind of message was Iran trying to send with this attack, you think? I, I think they were trying to appease domestic anger, Byron. I think what they were trying to do was do something that would allow them to say to their people, we stood up to the great Satan, we stood up to the United States, we hit them back, but not do it in such a way that it would give President Trump a reason or force him to retaliate against Iran with greater uh, uh, conventional military means. So it was uh, just enough to satisfy domestic pol uh, political opinion and satisfy the anger of the people, but it wasn't enough to provoke an all-out war in the Persian Gulf. Now, the Iranian Re Revolutionary Guard Corps put out a statement calling the U.S., <clears throat> quote, terrorist and arrogant and warning that any American aggression would result in more painful and pounding responses. What kind of damage are they capable of, of creating? I, I think they're, they're quite capable. Uh, you, remember the, um, you remember the attacks on the Saudi Arabian oil refineries. If you looked at that, the precision, each one of those oil tanks had a pinprick that blew up that tank. Very well coordinated. Their military is quite good. It, most of it's homegrown, uh, but they do have excellent capabilities. This is why when we look at these two targets tonight, uh, Al-Assad Air, Airfield and Erbil, these don't make sense. If they wanted to really do damage to the United States, these would be the last two places they would hit. Any other place in the Persian Gulf that had U.S. troops would have made much more sense. So this goes back to this idea, perhaps they didn't want to do any damage. Perhaps they only had to make a statement that they could play on domestic television, show a bunch of rockets shooting up in the air, and call it a day. Now, Tehran is about eight and a half hours ahead of where we are right now, time-wise, in the U.S. What will it be, the uh, Iranian perspective, on what took place? I, I think they'll probably feel good that their that their government did something, uh, that their government stood up for them. Uh, the, the the grief, the outpouring of grief that we've seen, the photos of of hundreds of thousands of people filling the streets, you know, stampedes because they wanted to get close to the Soleimani uh, uh, casket. So uh, there's a lot of emotion right now in in Iran itself. Uh, if we think for the past three months, there have been riots in the streets. Thousands of Iranians have been killed by Iranian security forces because of the dissatisfaction with the, with the regime. And so the regime needs to deflect attention elsewhere, needs to show that they're responsive to the, to, the, uh, to the sadness of the Iranian people. And so I think that's what they're going to continue to play, say we stood up to them, but now we need to get back to fixing the country. Steve Ganyer, thank you so much. Thanks, Byron. Up next, how years of boiling tensions between two countries culminated in today's missile attack by the Iranians.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.